Hello, I'm Rex Basterfield, and what you just heard there was six presets, one after the other, cross-faded, from my Quilcom Chaos synthesizer. I was inspired to look into uh, chaotic oscillations when I came across Dan Gillespie's uh, rather wonderful Pendulate synthesizer, which is a free monophonic version of his Generate synthesizer. And uh, I read up what I could find on the subject, which was not too much, but I've put some links in the document with the download. And I decided to make my own take on uh, chaotic oscillations, so you can have an explore of, uh, of my take on the subject. So by, before I go into the, uh, the details of the uh, generation method, I'll give you a quick overview of the, uh, the synthesizer. On the uh, left side here, we have the generator panel, which has got three identical generators capable of uh, chaotic behavior, uh, a sub oscillator, and when you have more than one generator selected, you can uh, operate these controls here, which further increase the chaos. So there's nothing else really unusual about the synthesizers. The signal from the generators is mixed together goes into a, a dynamic filter with various uh, options and uh, it has its own uh, filter envelope generator um, which can also be used uh, to modulate other parameters on the synthesizer. The signal from the filter then goes into the volume envelope generator that creates the volume contour and uh, there's one or two features in this which uh, you can read about in the uh, user guide which i won't go into here but it's quite flexible and the i should mention the volume envelope can also be used to modulate other parameters on the instrument next we have an effects section here incidentally this button here switches between effects and modulation so in the effects mode we have four bins and in each pin we can have any of the uh, available uh, effects panels. So we can choose from all sorts there. And uh, you can have the same effect as many times over as you want. So you could have four delays, for instance, uh, should you want to. And I should mention I've uh, extended the functionality and uh, got a few different modules in here from previous synthesizers. So. Uh, it's worth having a look through the user guide to get the background on that. The last thing in the effects chain is the rather wonderful Enverb 7B Reverb made by uh, Martin Vekanek with my own knobs on it. <laughs> and uh, I think this is a very sweet sound in Reverb and a lot of people like it. But you can always use your own external effects, of course. You don't have to uh, use the built-in ones. Finally, we have a volume control with clip indication. And the recorder allows you to record individual sounds or uh, short clips up to 10 seconds and save them out as a WAF file. So you can put that into your favorite um, uh, sampler or directly into the DAW or uh, door, I should call it, shouldn't I? Uh, or do whatever you want with it. And over here, we have the uh, general panel where we uh, make settings that affect the whole instrument. And uh, it's worth having a look through the user guide about this because there's a few things there that uh, you might find unusual and interesting. Now I'll just show you the, uh, the modulation panel we have, uh, or view I should say. We have three LFOs with various features. They can be synchronized by a polar unipolar. Or we have the, the option of uh, one shot. So you just get the first cycle when you play a note and of course a usual range of uh, waveforms and randoms and chaos uh, from the LFOs. Then uh, I, I couldn't fit three modulation envelopes on the screen so we have three here which we can select with this button and turn them on and off individually. Uh, this is the modulation matrix which you won't be surprised to hear. Um, Source, we have various sources, not just these modules here, but mod wheel, after touch, the so random velocity tracking, etc. And here we have a, a large range of um, 
targets. You won't see all of that on your screen. Um, so a lot of things can be modulated, especially on the generators. Uh, these little knobs here are bipolar and that sets the amount of modulation in either direction. Okay, so now we'll get on to the, uh, the more interesting stuff, which is these generators here. So a generator has two oscillators and we can uh, set the tuning into ratio mode here uh, so we can go produce a harmonic series or subharmonic mode like on the Troutonium or we can go to the more conventional interval mode where we set octaves, semitones and fine. Both of these uh, you can adjust, you can trim or adjust the fine tuning. Now as you would expect the uh, oscillators have a range of uh, waveforms available and also three flavours of noise to choose from. These next three knobs here uh, have a major effect on the timbre. So the ratio determines the mix between the two oscillators. So if I press a note, let's take one up an octave. Okay, and of course the ratio can be modulated. So with uh, three generators available, just that, that one feature um, is quite useful for making different sounds um, with modulation. So now onto the uh, shape control. What this does is, is it takes the mixture ratio of the two oscillators and feeds that back into the mod oscillator for phase modulation. So the phase modulation is actually a mixture of the two oscillators. So let's hear what that can do. I'll just go down an octave on that and that's the ratio. Okay, and we'll bring the shape up. So there's a range of timbers there and then I'll alter the ratio. And here total chaos starting to cut in there. Keep in mind that shape uh, value can be modulated. Now the other ingredient in the chaos recipe is added by introducing a delay uh, between the mix of the ratio and the shape and the feedback into the phase modulation of the mod oscillator. So. I'll demonstrate that. The delay doesn't do anything if the shape is down because there is no feedback. So let's bring some feedback in. Now let's introduce some delay. And when we have delay, each note can be different from all the others. Now, of course, it's not random. Chaos is not random. Uh, so every time you hit that note, you get the same sound. And this delay makes the whole chaotic system sensitive to pitch. Uh, so if I operate the pitch wheel, you'll hear it go through various stages of chaos based on the the delay and the other parameters set now it doesn't end there and so if you turn on more than one generator some of these knobs become available or all of them and um, what these do is take the output for instance from generator one the whole output before the fader and feed back into the base oscillator phase modulator of the uh, the selected targets so in this case it's generator two and then for instance we can turn we can connect generator two to generator one so we have 
a sort of looping uh, feedback system. So I'll just demonstrate that to you. Turn these down. Generator 2 is on. Let's turn it. Okay. So now I'm going to turn, increase the amount from generator 1 to generator 2. And then generator 2 back into generator 1. So far what I've described in the, the routing of the, the signal is uh, type 1, so the base oscillator doesn't get any phase modulation, only the modulated oscillator, and that's type 1. You notice on that setting with a long time here, it takes a little while for the chaos to settle down into a regular pattern on some notes and not others. Uh, so let's change that to type 2. Now in type 2 the output from this mixer system here and the delay modulates the phase of the mod oscillator and the base oscillator in parallel. So that uh, gives us uh, another range of uh, possibilities. So you can see with all those options there's a, a huge range there and uh, really explored tuning and different uh, waveforms with you and uh, so on and so forth. So you probably grasp the idea that there's a lot of possibilities there. So you can use the Corkum Chaos to make uh, a very wide range of uh, bizarre noises but I personally think it comes into its own when you use it to introduce subtle differences in the timbre between notes as you as you play music I'll uh, play an example of that now you may notice there that the G sounds subtly different from the F I'll just play those two So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about, where you get a nice uh, variation of timbre between notes. Another feature I've included into all three generators is the option of a wave folder, uh, which folds the waveform up and down with a higher amplitude. And this is polyphonic, so you can play chords without any intermodulation distortion. So. This is just a sine wave going in, so if I increase the, the amount of drive, and we can uh, affect the symmetry of that to give a different range of harmonics. And we can mix the folded shape with the dry sound. This is 50-50 mix at the moment. And it's important to remember that these three parameters can also be modulated. So I believe that extends the range of timbre even further. Finally, we have three generators, of course, and each can be panned in the stereo field and have its level sets with this mixer arrangement here. And the levels can also be modulated. So I hope that's given you uh, some idea of the possibilities with this uh, chaos uh, idea. And I've provided over 70 presets there, which... Uh, I'm not going to run through any of them now, except the elephant horn scream. I like that one. Okay, just a bit of fun there. Um, so, uh, the presets will 
demonstrate various aspects of what I've shown you now and also uh, highlight some things that you can do with the uh, the effects and uh, so I hope you read the user guide and uh, get to get the best out of it and have some fun with it and uh, I'm going to play out with uh, another sequence of presets these are presets exactly as they appear on the synth uh, there's 11 of them played in series cross-faded and um, have fun and until the next time bye <laughs>